into all of this. Senator Kevin Kramer, the uh, North Dakota Republican senator, joins us right now. Senator, are you worried when you hear these reports, not only of spikes, obviously, in cases here, but abroad, that, that this is proving, you know, a nasty thing to get under control, maybe much r rougher than we thought? Well, you know, maybe it is, but what I worry more about is the response to it all, the panic that it creates, the fear that drives people's thinking. I mean, this, to suggest that somehow we should live in a risk-free uh, world is, is silly when you consider all the other ways that people can get sick and can die, and the way we uh, you know, even keep track of the numbers is a bit, I think, confusing to a lot of the public. And at the end of the day, we have to make sure, as the president said from the very beginning, that the cure is not worse than the disease, and that's what I worry about as we think about an economy and, and that opens up that includes and should include schools uh, being reopened. You know, as things stand now, Senator, I know it's a moving target, so my figures, even though I got them this morning, might be dated already, but that sure. 26 states now are in whole or part delaying the start of the in-person school year or just going entirely virtual. Some are splitting it between virtual and uh, in-person classes, but this seems to be a growing theme. Um, are you worried that the recovery itself is in jeopardy, whatever the medical necessity of that? Well, I do worry a little bit about that. What we, again, regardless of the medical necessity, what you know drives reality is how people respond. And you know, if you don't have schools open, that means one parent probably is going to have to stay home that would otherwise be earning an income. It means that um, you know schools supply, you know, distribution and whatnot would would be hurt, hurt, and that's part of our economy. Obviously, it also means that our children may not be learning as much and as well, and that's a competitive issue. Although this is not, as you said earlier, unique to the United States of America, it's certainly global. I'm wondering, too, on this stimulus measure that you and your Republican colleagues are working on, is it fair to say that the $600 a week unemployment benefit is going to end? It might be less, but it certainly won't be $600. Well, Neil, I think it has to be less than $600. We cannot have an economy reopen if a you know, large number of the workforce um, is getting paid more to not work. That clearly didn't help in, in the recovery. And so, you know, to, to reopen your business, you need a number of things. You need capital, you need, you know, a market, and you need workforce. And that's why our package focuses on that as well as in sending schools to reopen in a safe way, as well as focusing on the health care needs that, that fight this virus. And that's why this targeted approach that Republicans have brought up um, only costs a trillion dollars as opposed to the, you know, the left-wing wish list that the Democrats have brought up that costs $3.4 trillion. You know, um, I'm just wondering if there is a delay in, in reopenings and pushing things back, those same people getting these unemployment benefits will point to you, Senator, and say, well, you know, we're the ones hurting here, and you're acting like these delays aren't happening, and now you're cutting what has been a vital way for us to, to, to pay our bills and to avoid, you know, foreclosures at a really bad time. Um, what do you think of that? Well, I, I think that, you know, we live every day with a certain amount of uncertainty, Neil, but the goal should still be the glory of work and the joy of living, to quote um, North Coast's favorite president, Theodore Roosevelt, that we need to both protect people who cannot get a job and cannot, you know, cannot work in whatever field they're working in, but at the same time make sure that employers are able to have a workforce that's able and willing to work and not incented not to work. We, we simply can't have these, you know, either or circumstances because if that's the case, then Keynes was right all along and we ought to just, you know, tax everybody to death and redistribute the, the wealth and I don't think that that's what America wants to do. We need to have a common sense approach to reopening the economy while keeping people safe and that includes opening schools in a safe manner. You'd have to get a deal done pretty fast, um, and maybe by the end of this week. Is that doable? Well, I, I don't know that it's doable by the end of this week, Neil, and certainly right now it looks like we're a long ways apart, and that's why I applaud um, uh, Leader McConnell yeah. for coming up with this tightened-up um, proposal. Uh, the House, I think, leaves at the end of this week for the August recess. It seems they're willing to come back uh, you know, the, the following week when we're still in and, and wrap something up if it's necessary. But as far apart as we are, one of the things that I've noticed about this place is we always do our best work when there's a deadline looming. You know, it only makes sense that as long as the clock is still running, the negotiator is going to try 
try to put points on the board, um, but we are also driven by by the cliffs, the deadlines, the fact that these some of these benefits do run out and people really do need help, but we have to find a more modest approach. All right. Only in this day and age, right, Senator, is a trillion dollars considered a more modest approach. But the times in which we live, thank you very much for joining us. Good seeing you again. Good to see you. Thank you.